What's going on guys? So today's video is certainly an interesting one and you can probably tell the dilemma that I have with my new Texas Pride trailer and this is entirely my fault so this is not something that they actually did. Um, they actually recommended against doing what I did so we're going to talk about a challenge I have when it comes to loading up my zero turns onto the back of my new Texas Pride 14 foot low boy utility trailer. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so those of you who are into trailers probably know the exact issue I'm dealing with right here. And if you're not into trailers, there's a term that you should become very familiar with if you're looking at getting a trailer with a ramp, and that's called breakover height. That is my ability to take something like this with a very low deck height, it's probably only about maybe three and a half, four inches off the ground at the most, and get it onto a trailer like this. And there's two risks. One of those risks is in the process of going up, you can actually tip it backwards, believe it or not. So a lot of people back a tractor up something like this. But the biggest problem is the fact that the deck can hit this area right here because of that breakover angle, right? It's a little too steep. Now, why is that a problem for me, right? This is a 14 foot deck, it's a low boy trailer, but why do I have a problem with breakover height? Well, even though it's a low boy trailer, the only way I could really make the deck lower on this specific trailer would have been if I went with lighter axles, lighter duty tires, and even torsion axles that would have brought it down slightly. But I elected not to go with that because I wanted heavier duty equipment. Now, why did that hurt me in the end? You know, everyone looks at RVs and they're like, man, let's put bigger axles, let's put bigger tires, more robust stuff on. But you don't realize sometimes the negative effect that can have. So typically on a 14 foot utility trailer like this, you're gonna have like 3,500 pound tandem axles. So it's gonna give you like 7,000 pounds worth of axle capacity. That said, you know, some trailers like this will have like 5,100 pound axles. So you'll have like, you know, 10,200 pounds worth of total axle capacity if it's a tandem axle trailer. In my case, you know, we went way above that. Typically you might see 7,000 pound axles, but we actually put 8,000 pound axles on this trailer. So we have 16,000 pounds worth of total axle capacity. Well, how did that impact us negatively? Let me show you. So typically on something like this, you would have a 15 inch diameter wheel with a 225 75R 15 inch tire. And believe it or not, that tire alone is gonna sit about two inches lower than the tires that we have on here. So not only did we raise the overall height of the deck about an inch, because you take half of that, of course, because the other inch is gonna be the top side of the tire. So I hope that makes sense to most people. But the higher grade suspension, the leaf springs, and the axles alone raised the suspension of the trailer up another inch and a half. So I'm dealing with about two and a half inches of extra deck height only because I went with a more robust suspension system, wheel and tire setup. Now, the second part that impacted me negatively is the fact that I did not opt for a dovetail on the back of my trailer. What does that mean? A dovetail is where this part right here slopes down to decrease your breakover height. It makes things a little bit easier in terms of loading, especially things with a low belly, whether it be a zero turn mower, whether it be a vehicle or whatever else you may load. Because whenever a tire's here and a tire's there, this part right here is wedging up towards the center and it creates a very, very steep breakover height. So. This was something they suggested I not do. They told me we recommend a dovetail in the back because you're gonna have a very high breakover height because of how you want this trailer built with this eight inch frame, you know, this super robust suspension and all of this. So I opted to not have the dovetail and instead I opted for a five foot folding ramp system. But the five foot folding ramp system just isn't enough length to really overcome the breakover that I have here. And the problem is kind of twofold. The first one is with the zero turn, trying to go up this straight or forward, it kind of wants to lean back on you. If you're not careful, you get your front tires off the ground while going over and you still hit this part right here. If you're backing it up, it doesn't really have the traction because it's such a steep height. And if these are wet or damp at all, you have a hard time getting over it. And then you still have that breakover, which wants to make contact with the bottom of the mower deck. All bad things, all things that can lead to problems, things breaking or possibly injury. So what have I done to deal with this so far? I've used these metal uh, pieces of frame section that the folks at Lippert sent me 
I lay them on their side and I put them under the back right here. And it gives me, actually I don't use these, I use the box sections over there. And I essentially use them almost like bricks to where it raises the deck height. It's still not too high for the, the casters or the back tires to get on. And it gives me the clearance I need to actually get the mower onto the back of the utility trailer. So that's what I've been doing. It's not the ideal solution. Um, I could either remove these ramps and get longer ramps, which I really don't want to do because these are super awesome ramps. So I contacted the folks over at eTrailer and I worked with some of their, their technicians on the phone to figure out what a great solution for this might be. And uh, they sent me a great solution. So in front of me, you were looking at a product called Race Ramps. Now I am sure there are a ton of my viewers that are very familiar with this product. These are essentially breakover ramps. These are ramps that are designed to help you load a vehicle onto a cargo trailer or a car hauler. And you know, especially a low profile or a vehicle that sits real low to the ground that you may encounter that breakover clearance problem. Especially again, if you're dealing with a sports car or something like that. You know, there's not a real difference in terms of what these will accomplish for a car versus a zero turn mower with the same challenge. The difference is on a car, you have two different breakover problems. The first one is your front overhang where you can actually scrape it on the ramps as you go up. The second one is that same breakover angle when you start to get onto the vehicle. So there's a lot of reasons why you would want something like race ramps to lift the back of your, uh, your ramp up slightly to give you a shallower loading and breakover height whenever you're trying to load something on the back. So we're going to use these in a bit of an unconventional way. We're going to actually use them for a zero turn and we're going to put them underneath the front of the ramps right here. Let me show you what the folks over at Race Ramps have done to help make this a little easier. You can see the groove that's cut out right here and this is where you know naturally the ramp of the trailer is going to sit. So it's going to give you a very very shallow transition from the ramp to the actual uh, ramp on the trailer. Secondly, they've made these out of kind of a foam material with a texturized surface. It's almost like a bed coating style material on top of it, but very, very strong. Each one of these ramps is rated at 1,500 pounds load capacity. So you got 3,000 pounds worth of load capacity for a set of these ramps, which is gonna be more than enough for the zero turn, which only weighs about 1,100, 1,200 pounds. My Skag weighs closer to 1,600 pounds, and again, there's no chance that either of those are gonna damage these. Now, would I use my mini excavator on these? Probably not, because there's a high chance that at any given time, I would be able to exceed the total capacity of these. I would just have to be very careful loading the mini excavator on there, but that's why I have my tilt deck trailer over there. So when you look at these, they look super strong, super robust, which they are, but they're very lightweight. They only weigh about maybe five or six, maybe seven pounds each. You can see they're made in the US, 1,500 pounds max per ramp, and they are just insanely lightweight. I mean, it's crazy how lightweight yet robust these things are. And they're gonna give me exactly what I'm looking for, hopefully. So let's go ahead and place these under the ramps on the trailer and see if these accomplish the goal that I'm looking to accomplish. Okay, so I have one of them right here. I'm gonna see if I can do this all by myself real quick. Okay, so I kind of wedged it under with my other foot. I'm gonna bring it back a little bit. All right. Got one down. They're about 15 inches wide, and I think 14 inches wide, somewhere in that range. And these are gonna give me a total increase of height of six inches from the ground to the top of the ramp here. But in reality, because these ramps right here are about an inch and a half tall, it's gonna give you a four inch rise as far as lifting this up over what you would normally see. Okay, so I have both of the race ramps in place underneath the trailer ramp. I'm gonna get my buddy Mark on the zero turn here and he's gonna go ahead and drive it up and we're gonna see if we get the clearance we need. But he's driven it up the back of this trailer several times and uh, it gets pretty steep. It gets pretty steep and the front kind of feels like it wants to come off the ground sometimes. But I think with these in place, it should make that process a lot safer feeling, but overall a lot safer in general. And whenever we get to this area right here, we shouldn't have any problems with breakover height. Okay, he's gonna go up real slow. Hey Mark, when you get to the top and you start to go over, let's go slow so we can see how much clearance we've gained. Perfect. 
Okay, so it certainly helped us going up, but backing down it, we still had a bit of an issue with breakover height. All right, so Mark's gonna drive it back on because we did hit when we came down and we're gonna try something a little bit different this time. He's gonna try to push up on the deck height, even though it's in its highest position, there's still some room for it to come up a little higher whenever, uh, whenever you're going over this. And he's pushing up on it now. And it's certainly given us a bit more clearance, which is nice. Okay, so now he's gonna go down. Go ahead and let off of that. And you can see it, it actually lets him raise it up a little bit more. See how high you can raise it. So it gives him about another maybe half an inch whenever he pushes on the pedal up here. All right, let's see what you can do coming down. So it looks like we only really needed that extra half inch of clearance going back up or coming down, which is really nice. So yeah, as long as you just press down on the uh, the deck lift pedal right there, you can raise it up just a little bit more to prevent it hitting. But you guys can imagine how difficult this could be if you don't have the clearance you're looking for and how you can damage things. You can damage the bottom, possibly the bolts holding your spindles in place because there's things that stick up here that may not be completely flat with what's ever underneath your, your actual mower. Now, a lot of people will say, well, why don't you just raise the front of your trailer, right? Well, typically you want your trailer hitched up to the tow vehicle if you're gonna be using it. And I could absolutely make the breakover height much less by doing something like this, where I essentially open this up and I raise the front up significantly. There, so now the front is way, way up pitched up significantly it was actually enough to kind of force everything back right here yeah and we wouldn't have any problem loading everything on or taking it off because i got the front sitting probably three to four inches higher than the back right now but this isn't a realistic way to load we could do it on this trailer because these braces right here so these braces would prevent the front from coming up but on a lot of trailers you don't have these these braces right here which means the minute you load all your weight right here the front could come flying up and you could cause your trailer to roll forward or backwards and you could have a, a very very serious safety issue but you know i think these are going to help us tremendously especially when we're loading mowers on here um, both the skag and the toro have that ability for you to push that pedal and raise the deck a little bit higher than what its highest traveling position is but yeah, these are uh, super cool. They're super lightweight. Between the two of them, it's about 14 pounds total. You can easily carry them around with one hand. Um, we're gonna strap them down inside of the trailer here, probably to the very front or even to the sides right here. And it's gonna give us the capability of just ensuring that wherever we take our equipment, whatever we're loading in the back, we have the capability of properly loading it without such an extreme breakover height. And this is even gonna come in handy when we put the tractor on the back here, the bad boy, because again, it's gonna limit that breakover height. It's gonna limit this angle right here. So you're you're not climbing up or going down something so steep and uh, it's just safer overall so again the more you can make this less of a slope less of a breakover it's just safer for everybody for all your equipment for everything that you're going to be doing and uh and safety is always a good thing whenever you're hauling stuff around Anyways, guys, I'll put a link in the description of this video to these race ramps uh, from my, my sponsors over at eTrailer. Big shout out to eTrailer.com. I mean, who would have thought that they carry these things? They carry so much crazy stuff. If you haven't checked them out, visit eTrailer.com. Um, they've been a phenomenal sponsor to the channel. And when you go to their website, if you've never visited it, you'll see exactly why they're such a good partner. They, uh, they have so much cool stuff, so much stuff you absolutely need from shackles, shackle hangers, hitches, pin boxes, replacement parts 
boots, um, everything you could imagine, everything you could ever need. If you are uh, gonna be towing, you have a trailer, you have an RV, you have a utility trailer, you're into lawn and garden, you have a business. I mean, they're just a phenomenal resource for everything. So big shout out to them. Again, I'll put a link in the description so you can get to these race ramps if these are something you may need for your cargo trailer, utility trailer, toy hauler, whatever. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, I'd really appreciate it if you took a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.